church, let's all stand up and let's sing that song, The Dearest Friend I Ever Had. Sing out this morning. When I was drifting out in sea, I had no peace, no joy within. Oh, but Jesus came and made me glad. He's the dearest friend I've ever had. Sing it out now. He saved my soul. Oh, bless his name. I'll never forget the day he came. He makes me glad when I Save my soul. Oh, bless his name. I'll songs hallelujah to the lamb Hallelujah to the Lamb that was slain 
upon a tree. By his stripes we are healed, by his blood we are sealed. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Great singing this morning. Let's sing hymn number 529, Oh How I Love Jesus. We'll sing all four verses. There is a name I love to hear, I love to sing its word. It sounds like music in my ear, the sweetest name on earth. Sing, oh, how I love Jesus, oh, how I love Jesus, oh, how I love Jesus. Because he first loved me, he tells me of a Savior's love who died to set me free. It tells me of his precious blood, the sinner's perfect plea. Oh, how I love Jesus! Oh, how I love Jesus! How I love Jesus because He first loved me. It tells me what my Father had in store for every day. And though I tread a dark summer, give sunshine all the way. Sing, oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus because He first loved me. It tells of one whose loving heart can fill my deepest woe. The weighty sorrow bears a part that none can bear below. Oh, how I love Jesus. Oh, how I love Jesus. What a privilege it is to be here this morning. It's good to have each and every one of you. Thank you for all the visitors that are here this morning. Pray for our church family that are out and those that are traveling, those that are still out because of COVID and not able to be here, but by way of live stream, thank you for tuning in this morning. But it's good to be in the house of the Lord. David said, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. I often think of that, the privilege of being in the house of the Lord this morning and fellowship one with another. It's good to have you here. It's good to have Brother Andres back. If you could take us a word of prayer, we'd appreciate that, sir. Amen. All right, remain standing. Let's sing hymn number 554, I'll Fly Away. So glad morning when the sun was over. I'll fly away to a home on God's celestial shore. I'll fly away. Sing it out. Sing out. Sing up, sing up, fly away, oh glory, fly away, morning when I 
time in the song service. As a matter of fact, I want to sing that last verse one more time, just a few more days. And guess what? There'll be no more weariness. We'll be having fun all the time, praising the one who sent us here. That's what we're here for now. If you'd praise Jesus just a little bit more here, you'd have a lot more fun. Let's sing that one more time. Just a few more weary days, and then I'll fly away. I hope you're flying too. Here we go. Just a few more weary days, and then I'll down just a little bit. Our last one this morning we're going to sing Calvary covers it all. Far dearer than all that the world can impart was the message that came to my heart. How did Jesus alone my sin did adore, and Calvary covers it all. Calvary covers it all. I pass with its sin and stain. My guilt and despair, Jesus took on him. And Calvary covers it all. The stripes that he bore, and the thorns that he bore, told his mercy and love evermore. And my heart bowed in shame as I called on his name. And Calvary covers. How blessed the thought that my soul by him bought shall be his in the glory on high. Where with gladness and soul I'll be one of the throng and Calvary covers it all. Sing it out. on him there, and Calvary covers it all. Sing that chorus again. Calvary covers it all. My past with its sin and stain, my guilt and despair, Jesus took on him there. And Calvary covers it all. Ain't you glad Calvary covers?
covers it all this morning. Amen. You can be seated at this time. Miss Crystal's going to come sit. people said? Amen. Let's take our Bibles and go to the book of 1 Thessalonians. Kids, if you're headed to junior church, you can be dismissed. Um, no running or fighting over suckers on your way back. That'll be good. 1 Thessalonians chapter number 1. Thank you, Crystal, for that song. Couldn't even tell if she's older. Voice sounded clear and uh, it was good. That old raspy voice is good. 1 Thessalonians. I trust you've been here for the three parts of this series, and uh, today will be the last one on um, this section as far as the book of First Thessalonians, or chapter 1 of First Thessalonians, but um, I trust that you will be here tonight as we um, look at closing out the life, a transformed life, and, uh, and I'm excited about what God's got for us tonight, and then... Um, I'm not sure I, I have the messages where we're going to go. I'm just not sure how to title um, Porky Pig and His Friends um, 
for uh, starting Sunday night next week, but you won't want to miss that. It'll be on spiritual warfare, a study that I've been going through, and I've just got liberty uh, from the Lord to go ahead and kind of run you through, teach you what God's been teaching me, but uh, you won't want to miss Sunday nights um, starting next week for quite a while, um, but it, it ought to be a good, a good time of study. 1 Thessalonians chapter number 1, what a good week, what a beautiful day the Lord has given. Um, I don't see four inches of rain falling out there anywhere, and it's, and it's good. And i um, thankful for that, thankful for the uh, good weather. But the Bible says in 1 Thessalonians 1.1, 1, 1, Paul and Silas and Timothy, and to the church of, Thessal of the Thessalonians, which is in God the Father. Well, I think you should underline that, and to the church of the Thessalonians, which is in God the Father. Isn't it good to know that we're part of the church that's a part of God? That's in God the Father and in the Lord Jesus Christ. Grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. We give thanks to God always for, for you all, making mention of you in our prayers, remembering without ceasing your work of faith and labor of love and patience of hope in the Lord Jesus Christ, in the sight of God and our Father. Knowing, brethren, beloved, your election of God. For our gospel came not unto you in word only, but also in power and in the Holy Ghost and in much assurance, as ye know what manner of men we were among you for your sakes. For ye became fellow followers of us and of the Lord, having received the word in much affliction, with joy, with the joy, with joy of the Holy Ghost, so that ye were examples to all that believe in Macedonia and Archaea. Verse number 8 says, For from you sounded out the word of the Lord, not only in Macedonia and Archaea, but also in every place. Your faith toward God, your faith to God word was spread abroad, so that we need not to speak. Notice what he says, we need to speak anything. For they themselves show us what manner of entering in we had unto you, and how ye turned from God, you, you turned to God from idols to serve the living and true God, and to wait for his Son from heaven, whom he raised from the dead, even Jesus, which delivered us from the wrath to come. I'm going to ask Brother Davis if he'll stand and take us to prayer. And while we're praying today, continue to be praying for Arthur. And um, I ask you to pray for Kevin Finch today. Uh, we've been praying for his uncle and his aunt, and uh, his aunt or his uncle went home to be with the Lord yesterday. So we'll be praying for them for another loss. They lost his niece and now his uncle, and his aunt's not doing really well. She's back in the hospital. So if you continue to be praying for them. Amen. I also meant to ask you to be praying for the, the Thorne family. Um, Mr. Thorne went uh, and passed away the other night, so if you'd just be praying for them during this time of loss and um, uh, as they make decisions about what to do with the buildings and all the things, pray for them if you would. I told Michael that we would be praying. I believe if we're going to live a life that has an impact for Jesus, um, we're going to have to make some changes. Um, you can't live a life that has an impact for the world as far as the flesh and the devil and pleasing to your flesh and pleasing to the world and pleasing to the devil and have an impact for Christ. 
There's got to be some things that change in our life. And as we've come through this study, we saw that this church of Thessalonica, they had such a change when they got saved. They had a change in their desire. And I want you to realize our desires will change when Jesus moves in. Your desire, when you've been born again, you're a new creature created in Christ Jesus. Old things are passed away. And behold, all things are become new. And you're going to have a change in desire. There's a change in me and there's a change in you when Christ is apart. And I want you to realize, not only that, there's a change of direction. We are no longer satisfied in this world of sin. We are no longer While you may think it's pleasurable for a season, and it is, it will never satisfy. You'll need something more and something more and something more. And so this morning I want you to realize that a life that has an impact with Jesus for Jesus will be a life that is marked by change. And truly the change that was there in the church of Thessalonica had spread abroad to many to where Paul said, we didn't even need to speak a word. Jesus was so real to you that we could see Jesus, what we had taught you and what we have preached to you in the lives of others as we came into Archasia and we came into Macedonia and we came into the regions beyond. Now he said, we didn't even need to say a word. Your message had spread abroad. You had such an impact for Jesus. And then number two, we looked at it's a life marked by commitment last week. Understand, it's a commitment of our labor of love. And I want you to realize a labor of love. We cannot love this world through the flesh, but we can love the world through Jesus Christ. And we can be sacrificial in our giving and sacrificial in our going. And understand, it's to serve a true and living God and come into that place where we have made the decision to commit. I want to make a difference in our community I want to make a difference in our state. I want to make a difference in our world. But I know it will never take place if there's never been a change. There must be a change. There must be a day when you put your faith and trust on Jesus, a birthplace when there was life after death. And I want you to understand where you became alive, a new creature created in Christ Jesus, and there must be a place of commitment. I am ready now. To change. I'm ready now to commit. I want to get involved. And then thirdly, I want you to see to living a life that has an impact with Jesus is a life marked by confidence. I'm not talking about the kind of confidence that Bear Bryant would have for Alabama football. Drew's not in here, so I can't pick on him, but he went duck hunting and um, he was out with his buddies and, and they were seeing a bunch of ducks go by and they had gotten a few. But he was so confident that they said that there was a single duck that was flying by and he pulled up on it and he shot. And as he shot, the duck continued to fly. So Bear Bryant, without a smile, without even a change of his demeanor, looked at the guys who were hunting, him, hunting with him. He said, guys, you just witnessed a true miracle. There it goes yonder. A dead duck. <laughs> That's how confident he was in his shooting. Some of us sitting here this morning, we have that kind of confidence. I, I want you to understand that we need the confidence like the young missionary child that was brought home on furlough and him and his brothers were down by the lake and they were playing on the pier and the youngest of four years old, he fell into the water and had never been taught to swim. The other boys began to scream and holler and get dad's attention. And dad comes running down and he jumps into the water and he dives to the bottom and he, he's looking frantically for his son and he can't find him. He comes back up for hair and he goes down a second time and he can't find his son. No, nowhere to be found. And he comes up one more time and for the third time he begins to go down. And on the way down he, he brushes his son's leg and he spins around and comes back up and he sees his son under the water, about three feet, hanging on a pier with everything he has. He grabs his son, pries him loose, and pulls him to the top and takes him up, and he gets his air, and they both get their air back, and they're sitting on the bank, and they're just thanking God that he's alive. And he asked his son, he said, Son, why were you hanging so tightly on the pier? Why were you squeezing? What were you thinking? He said, I knew my dad would come. I knew you would come. 
You say, Brother Kelly, why did you tell us that story? Because I believe that a life that is going to have an impact for the cause of Christ is a life that is marked by confidence that Jesus is coming. When you look at this passage in verse number 3 of 1 Thessalonians chapter number 1, the Bible says, Remembering without ceasing your work of faith and your labor of love. But these next words, the patience of hope in our Lord Jesus Christ at the sight of God and our Father. In the sight of God and our Father. The patience of hope means simply this. It means steadfast. If you remember what we preached about the church here three weeks into their existence, three weeks from where Paul started it, they lost their pastor. And if there was ever a reason for un unsteadiness, if there was ever a reason that a church could have or an excuse not to be steadfast and immovable and always about it, 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 it could be this church. They had an impact in their world for the cause of Christ. Take your Bibles and go with me back in 1 Thessalonians. And I believe the reason why they had an, an impact is because they had a confidence. They had a confidence in the risen Savior. Understand, their foundation of this confidence was found in the resurrected Savior. That Jesus, why He said He would come again, I want you to understand that He rose from there. Everything He said had come true. And so now that they have this new confidence, they were working as though Jesus was coming today. Listen, I, I want you to believe that as a local New Testament church, it could be any moment that Jesus comes again. Ready or not, here He comes. Are you ready for Jesus to come today? Has there been a change? Has there been a time in your life when you realize that you were in need of a Savior, that you could not save yourself, you could not give enough, go enough, do enough, pray enough, there's nothing you could do. You were separated from God. But God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son. And there came a day in your life when you realized He loves me. And you placed your faith and trust on Jesus and Jesus alone. There was a change. Look, if you would, in 1 Thessalonians, the Bible says, in verse number 9, it says, For they themselves show us the manner of entering we had unto you, and how ye turned to God from idols to serve the living and true God. And notice the, how they turned and the change, and they start, turned from idols. And this is the testimony that the church of Thessalonica has in Archaea and Macedonia. But notice in verse number 10, And to wait for His Son... From heaven, whom he raised from the dead, even Jesus was delivered us from the wrath to come. Here's what he said. We're going to wait. He said, here's what I've learned. I, I, I saw that you were saved. I saw that you were changed. I saw that you had a labor of love. You had a service. And you were ministering. And you were going into these cities and these highways and byways. And you were expecting Jesus to come again. Throughout the five chapters here in 1 Thessalonians, Paul's going to carry that theme through. Jesus is coming. I want you to look to the person next to you this morning, and I want you to simply say this. Jesus is coming. Now, how many believe that? Let me ask you a question, and let's be honest. How many lived yesterday like Jesus was coming? I mean, if we really believed that Jesus was coming, would we be so shy to tell our neighbor? Would we be so shy to tell that person that served us at the cash register that Jesus is coming? Would we be so shy to tell that waiter that waited on us as we sat there and they served us the food and we prayed over our meal and we did all the Christian things, but did we fail to tell them of the love of Jesus? When's the last time that you walked into a place and the testimony was so strong you didn't even have to say anything because people already knew? Many times as I'm flying or getting to travel, and it's amazing to me, I'm a people watcher. It came from my childhood. And you could tell a way a Christian walks. You say, oh, come on. I don't know. I'm just telling you. Has anybody else ever experienced that where you can just say, 
well, my spirit witnesses with their spirit that they're a child of God. And then you begin to open that conversation. You find out they've been saved for years. And you find out, and then there's there's the ways that preachers carry themselves. So you think, I think that guy right there is a preacher. I can just, our spirits are witnessing. And, and you find out, it, it, it's amazing. Listen, there ought to be, there ought to be that kind of spirit, that there ought to be that kind. Listen, anywhere you've been, when I follow you, do you think the people around you ought to know a little bit about Jesus? If we really believe that Jesus would come again, look if you would in chapter number 2 of 1 Thessalonians. Look if you would in verse number 19. For what is our hope, our joy, or crown of rejoicing? Verse 19 of chapter 2 of 1 Thessalonians. The Bible says, And our crown of rejoicing are not even ye in the presence of our Lord Jesus Christ. Say it with me, at His coming. Paul said, Jesus is coming again. He's coming again. It's a marvelous message we bring. We have to understand the urgency of the hour because Jesus is coming again. The church that had an impact for Jesus was a church. They was a church, I want you to understand, that had change in their life because of salvation. They had commitment in their life, but they also had a confidence that, hey, this world will soon be passed and only what's done for Christ will last. Look if you would in chapter number 3. Notice if you would in verse number 13 to the end. That he may establish your hearts unblameable in the holy in holiness before God, even our Father. Say it with me, at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Do you think it was on the Apostle Paul's mind? Do you think Paul thought that Jesus was coming again? Do you think as he was teaching the church at Thessalonica, hey, you better get ready. He's coming. Ready or not, here he comes. He's coming. Get out and share the message. You may not have tomorrow to share the message. The church that's going through turmoil, sickness, and sorrow, he would give us chapter number 4. Look, if you would, in 1 Thessalonians chapter number 4, he said, but I would not have you ignorant brethren concerning, in verse 13, them which are asleep, that you sorrow not even as others, which have no hope, for we believe that Jesus died and rose again. And all God's people said, how many believe that this morning? Say amen. Here's what he said. We believe that Jesus died and that he rose again. Even so them which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. They're not preaching soul sleep. They're in Jesus. They're talking about somebody that's in the grave, but he's talking about them God's bringing with them. If He's got to resurrect them, He's got to get them, then bring them. No, He's bringing with Him. And notice the Bible says, verse 15, Even this we say unto you by the word of our Lord, that we which are alive and remain of the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord Himself shall descend from heaven with a shout and the voice of Mark the voice of an archangel and the trump of God and the dead in Christ shall rise first. I'm talking about their old corruptible fleshly bodies will come out of the grave as Jesus brings back our loved ones that have been. They'll understand they'll re- and it's going to be an exciting day. But here's what he said. We which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. So shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. The church that had an impact for Jesus was a life that was marked by change, was a life that was marked by a change of direction, a change of desire, a a commitment of a labor of love and a service to a living God. It was marked by a confidence that Jesus is coming again and understand their life was motion. I I want you to realize we we, we don't... Listen, you ought to pin it up on your mirror today. Jesus is coming. You ought to realize that this could be the last day. This could be the... If it's cloudy out there, it could be the day. He's coming again. Hey, the reality of it is we ought to be excited that Jesus is coming. So excited. When's the last time you said to anybody, this could be the day? Aren't you excited? This could be the day. Are you ready? This could be the day. I wonder what our waitress today would say. If you just use those words, what are you excited about? What's going to happen today? What could happen today? Oh, this could be the day when Jesus came. Oh, Jesus. 
No, I'm talking about the church ought to be so excited about Jesus coming that our loved one knows that, hey, if I'm not here, break the glass because I'm telling you, the reality of it is the only thing that's left. Do you understand that there's not going to be the power of the local... Do you understand when we go through that time period, and don't want to get off chasing rabbits, but what's going to take place? They're going to cry for the first three years, peace and safety, and it's going to look pretty good. But after those three years, the terminology, all hell is going to break loose. They're going to release the demons that have been bound. Not just the demons that have been present, but the ones that have been chained in the book of Peter. And they'll be released and torment upon this earth will be horrible. Listen, we ought to realize today, Jesus is coming. Hey, look to the person again and, and, and just tell them, Jesus is coming. Hey, the next time you have a problem with your wife in the morning, would it change? Would it change how you respond if you had on your mind Jesus is coming? Hey, the next time you have a problem with your boss, would it change your thoughts? A bad day? This could be the day. I was glad when they said unto me, hey, every day, this is the day that the Lord hath made, and I will rejoice in it. Why can I rejoice? You don't understand. Everything's falling apart. It's raining cats and dogs. And preacher, don't you understand? Because Jesus could come. Comfort one another. Oh, don't you understand? This lost one, loved one, that lost loved one, and all the problems. The comfort is that Jesus is coming. How many believe that Christ died? How many believe that he was buried? How many believe that he rose again? Hey, how many believe that as the disciples stood there gazing, this same Jesus which was taken up shall come again in like manner? I'm telling you again, as the clouds received him out of his sight, there's coming a day, and soon and very soon, Jesus is coming again. And he said this when he was upon this earth, when the Son of Man returns, will he find faith upon this earth? Will there be any church that's out there living the life that has an impact for Jesus? A life that has confidence that Jesus is coming again. So confident that He's coming again that we live our life every day as though it could be today. And as I was going through and preparing this, I had to be honest. I don't live my life that way. I live my life for Jesus. I serve Him. I worship Him. But I don't wake up every morning with a thought, this could be the day. If I did, it would change my communication. It would change, listen, it would change. And the church at Thessalonica was so excited about Jesus coming again that they shared with everybody around them that Jesus was coming and that He had died and that He was buried and that He rose. You know what they shared? It was called the gospel. And that all could come unto Jesus. Him that cometh unto me, I will no wise cast out for whosoever shall call. And they went from city to city and they were preaching it to Jews and Gentiles, Greeks and barbarians. They were preaching it to all and that the gospel was no longer hid. But now, now we live in a day and age. And we've heard it so much. We sing about it. Sing this song with me. Marvelous message we bring, glorious carols we sing, wonderful word of the King, Jesus is coming again, coming again, yes he's coming again, it may be morning, may be noon, may be evening and may be soon, that don't even light your fire. I mean, we sing, what a day that will be when my Jesus I shall... And we think about it in somewhere way, way, way down in the future. But it could be today, in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye. You could be here now and it's done. Those of you 
that have placed your faith and trust in Jesus Christ, what a day, glorious day that will be. Those of you that have not, when this place is empty, and a few are left behind, I don't want you to ever say, well, I attended Resurrection Bay Baptist Church. It was a church, you know, they had good people. But they never were really marked by change. I saw a change in their direction. I saw the drunk on the street. I saw the rich in the power. I saw their lives changed. I saw people who normally in this world wouldn't get along. I saw them become a family. I saw their mercy. I saw their grace. I saw their labor of love. I saw their concern. I saw their sacrifice. I saw everything. And I saw it as an amazing thing. I heard them preach that Jesus loves me. No matter what sin I've been involved in, no matter how far I've gone, I'm never too far gone that God can't reach down and pull me up out of that miry pit. I heard him preach it. I saw him live it. I wonder today, if there was no resurrection Bay Baptist Church, would it even make a difference in your community? Oh, I know, good people, churchgoers, you'd find another church to go to. Preachers, they'd go find another church to preach at. Would there be a difference? Are we making an impact for Christ? Do we believe that Jesus is coming again? And I'm just laying the foundation to get in the message this morning, but I want you to think about this. If it's a life marked by confidence, do I live my life in the confidence that it could be today? Am I that confident that He's coming? Or am I numb? Then I want you to see lastly in chapter number 5, if you'll pick it up with me, if you would, in verse number 23. Well, let's just let's back it up because it's a great chapter. Verse 16, what's it say? Rejoice. Let's say it again. What's it say? Rejoice. Church, rejoice. Do you think they had something to rejoice about? They were hopeless, helpless, godless. They were bound for a devil's hell. And Jesus saved them. Pray without ceasing and everything give thanks for this is the will of God and Christ Jesus concerning you. Church, quench not the spirit, despise not prophesying, prove all things, hold fast that which is good, abstain from what? All appearances of evil. And the very God of peace sanctify you, set you apart, holy, and I pray God your whole spirit, soul, body, and body be preserved blameless unto what? Say it with me. The coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Faithful is he that call you who also will do it. And then he says, brother, pray for us. Over and over again, Jesus says in Revelation chapter 3, verse number 11, I come quickly, church, hold fast. In Revelation 22, 7, I come quickly. In 22, 17, we got the, 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 the trichotomy of, of the invite to come, to come unto Jesus, all you that labor and are heavy laden, that you could come to Him. He says in Revelation twenty two seventeen, 17, I come quickly, I come quickly, and my reward is with me. In Revelation twenty two twenty, 20, surely, surely, He says, I come quickly. Church, Jesus is coming, and we ought to have some confidence this morning that Jesus is coming again. The church... A Thessalonica was a church that waited for the sun from heaven. Every time the sun rises and you see the beauty, how many have ever been up that early in the morning and you see the sun rise? Oh, what a beautiful thing. It ought to bring to your heart. This could be the day that the sun rises. The foundation, the foundation of this confidence was in, founded in the resurrected Savior and the factual, the factual evidence that He risen and now He's coming again, it ought to make us move. Notice the, the confidence that we find here is the fulfillment of this confidence is that He rescued us. Go with me back to 1 Thessalonians 1.10. To wait for the Son from heaven, whom He raised from the dead, even Jesus, which delivered us from the wrath to 
come. Hey, not only is He coming, but I have been rescued. He has rescued you and me. How many could say you've been rescued? You say, preacher, what have I been rescued from? Number one, you've been rescued from the family of the devil. Because you were of your father. In John 8, 44, John 8, 44, you were of your father, the devil. He was a liar and he was the father of all lies. And how many here could say, I used to be part of a lying family, but now I'm part of truth. I want you to realize today that we have something to be excited about. We ought to go out here and make a difference. I am no longer part of the devil's family. Oh, well. That ought to make us excited today. Yeah. Jesus. He's coming. Perhaps the reason why we're not so excited about him coming is because when we see him, we get to give an account. And we get to see him when we should have known him, spent time with him, fellowship with him. Have you ever been involved where you were supposed to call somebody? And you got so busy, you didn't. And it wasn't that you had anything against them. You loved them. But life just got so wrapped up around the wheels, you know, the spokes of life, you, you failed to call them. I usually try to call my mother every Monday. And I know I've been around younger elderly people. I don't know how to say that. I'm not getting in trouble, but. I know she expects me to call every Monday. Well, this past Monday was just before I knew it. It's 9 o'clock at night. I'll, I'll call her tomorrow. Tuesday was I'll call her Wednesday. I, I'll call her Thursday. Thursday, Thursday, I'll, and I, I fully intended to. Friday, hello, Mom. I wonder where you've been. Oh, it made me feel like that at all. So how many times have I felt like that with him? Oh, I meant to get in the Bible. I meant to read. I meant to study. I meant to pray. I, God, I, I really meant to call. I call upon your name. I, I remember, I, but I, I got so busy, I wasn't thinking. I meant to tell them about Jesus, and now they're no longer living in sewers. There have been people I've been praying for that moved. My heart wasn't sad that they were leaving Seward. My heart was sad that we never got the opportunity to see them saved. You say, preacher, what, what do you mean? I'm saying today that we ought to have a life. I want to live a life that has an impact. I've been rescued from the devil's family. I've been rescued from the filth of the devil. I do not live in this world of sin. I'm not of this world of sin. I have been changed. I'm a new creature. I am understandably insulated, but not isolated, but I'm insulated. And there's nothing that can come against me. There's nothing that can come upon me. There's nothing that can happen in my life that God is not involved in. He loves me. And do we live like that? rescued, saved. Do we have the confidence? He's coming. He's coming. Do we have the commitment? Are we like I talked about last week in closing that church who wrote that little track that said we care about you? Are, are we a noted as a church that cares as, as someone who says, wait a minute, I, I understand. Here's the, wor here's, here's the world today. I don't want to go to church because I have to give up. I don't want to be a part of what you have because I, I, I can't quit. And it's all about the sin that's changed. See, it used to be the local New Testament church, they got saved and they quit doing that. Now we just do it and okay it. Don't make it right. Because when you realize I'm doing that with Him and Him living inside of me, He's fellowshipping with me and walking with me and talking. He's coming again. And I'm okaying this sin. 
It's okay for me to live in adultery. It's okay for me to live, and we, you name it. No, it's not. I'm talking about if we lived a life that Jesus was coming, where would I want Him to find me? How would I want Him to find me attitude-wise? How would I want Him to find me in relationship-wise? How would I want to find, how would I want, if I believed He was coming again, would I want me, Him finding me living like the devil's family? There's a difference in families. The picture of that is we all have different names. Well, most of us. The reason being is we're part of a different family. How many here are from Texas? I'm sorry. Uh, how many here? No. How many are here from Michigan? Look at that. It got good. Uh, uh, how many are here from Kentucky? How many are here today from Minnesota? How many figured out Minnesotans talk different? <laughs> they see that. I'm saying we all come. But let me tell you something. When we start looking at our names, how many here are Cinereskis? Here's what I heard the other day. Well, we just don't do it the Cinereski way. What good? You're not a Cinereski. I didn't ask you to do it my way. I'm not, I'm not trying to do it my way. I want to do it his way. And we all should try to be doing it God's way. How many here are Tucks? Davises? There's lots of Davises, different Davises. The other day I said, Brother Davis, pray there's like seven of them in the church. But they're different. Have you ever experienced a Christmas at the Davis family house? It's different. I'm just saying. They, they, they have to build walls to keep the stuff in. I've never experienced a Christmas like that. But I'm saying their family is different. I'm saying God's family ought to be different from the devil's family. And I'm not saying the Sinoreski family is the devil's family and the David's family is God's family. I'm saying we ought to be God's family and we ought to be different. Amen? Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. All that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life. It's not of God, but it's of who? The devil. And you go through this life and you live this, this sanctimonious that I'm somehow better than everybody. And I'm saying that that's just pride and arrogance, emulation, strife. And listen, if we're going to live a life that has an impact for Jesus, we've got to believe that He's coming again. And I guarantee you, it would change what I'm doing and why I'm doing what I'm doing. The why behind the what is everything. And you see the reality as you come down through this passage of Scripture that if you've been rescued from the devil's family, you've been rescued from the filth of the, of, of the devil's family. And how about you've been rescued from the fate? I'm not going to hell. The difference between me and them is I am going to spend eternity with Jesus in heaven. That's a good thing. Why would I not want them to skip hell and have heaven? Why wouldn't I want them to have the relationship that I have? Here's the deal. Our teenagers grow up thinking they're missing out on something. Our young people believe that the world has better things to offer than God's things. Thus they walk away from church and they walk away from God. I submit to you it's because it's the local New Testament church that isn't living a life that has an impact for Jesus and they don't want what we got because what we got isn't what He's offering. And we're living like the world, talking like the world, and feeling like we're missing out. Peer pressure is just as real when you're 60 as it is when you're 10. And I'm talking the reality as a child of God. We ought to come to this place where we want to have an impact. These people were under fire, but they didn't quit. They were, they were, they were, they were people who survived the quitting places. How did they do that, preacher? They had a confidence that this world does not know. They had a confidence that Jesus would come again. They wanted to be found waiting and working for Him. Hey, I want you to realize this morning, church, this isn't over. The best is yet to come. It's, this is just a staging stage. This is just a servant stage. But I want you to understand the rest of our life, we are going to be worshiping Him, praising Him, working for Him. Wait, 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 wait. Did you just say working? There's working in it? Read your Bible. It's going to be a wonderful place. There's an increase of His government and peace. There shall be no end. There will be government in heaven. Brother Kelly, you don't understand. Yes, I do understand. I've read the book 
And the book tells me that it's a whole lot different than what the world has painted heaven and hell like. You're not going to go to hell and shove coal with your buddies. It's not a big party with the devil and his crowd with some guy with a red pitchfork. Let me tell you something. He was an angel and he is a fallen angel and he is going to be tormented day and night. Hell wasn't created for you. It was created for him and the fallen angels. But because of your rejection of Jesus Christ, you will spend eternity in hell. And because of our apathy, because of the Laodicean age church who doesn't want to have an impact for Christ, there's a world that is lost and going to a devil's hell. And they think getting saved is having to give up drinking, is having to give up going to places and doing things. I'm telling you, I don't do those things to be saved. I do those things because I'm not saved. No, is that right? I do those things because I am, I don't do those things because I am saved. It changed me. I am a changed person. I can't live like the world, talk like the world, act like the world, smell like the world, and be the world and be Christ. And I am to conform to the image of Jesus Christ. And Jesus Christ would have an impact in his world because he was not of this world. He didn't love the things that are in this world. He gave it all. He died. He, he did not. Do you understand? Well, I've been rescued. The conclusion is simply this. Our lives that have an impact for Christ, let me ask you some hard questions. Truthfully, if the Lord shut the door to the church, if you never came again, would anybody miss you? I know those are hard questions. Would this world be any different if you weren't here? Would anybody not hear the gospel? That somebody cares, that somebody loves them, that somebody... I'm talking about a church that when Paul walked in to preach, he opened up the restaurant door and he sat down in the chair and started to talk. Oh, we already know about that. We already heard what what the Lord did in Thessalonica. We already heard how they got away from their idols and they quit doing the things they used to do and they changed their... Listen, God saved them. Old-fashioned salvation needs to become the new fashion. A new creature created in Christ Jesus. Old things are passed away and behold, all things are become new. Quit trying to reach the world living like the world and acting like the world and talking like the world. Come out from among them and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing. I will receive you. You be my sons and my daughters, and I want you to live a life. They ought to want what we've got instead of our kids growing up wanting what they've got. Instead of we thinking we're missing out on something because we have to be in church. We get to be in church. What a privilege. What a privilege. No more truer than this time of COVID-19 when we had to go live stream only and meet on the outside and not be able to be. And how churches, talking with someone today, churches still in America, still not able to meet, still not able to come. One church today being five five thousand dollars of service. Just simply, that was last week's fine. I don't know what this week's fine will be. You go through MacArthur and all that crowd that fought and they won and now that has been turned over and now they're fighting and being fined. Somebody like $54,000 and it's just like, it's, it's crazy. But if our church wasn't here, if you weren't here, let me ask you another question. Who in Seward would miss our church? Who in Seward would say, boy, I sure wish Resurrection Bay Baptist Church was here. They cared. Who would be ready to take their own life and say, oh, I wish I had that preacher I could call. I wish I had that neighbor. I know they cared. When that homeless person needs a meal, would they even miss us? Who in Seward? would miss us. I want to be that church that is noted as somebody who cares. Will this church have an impact in our town? Could We could, I believe, this morning if our lives were marked by a change. 
How many today can say there's been a change in me? There's a day in my life when I place my faith and trust on Jesus. He made me a new creature. I've been born again. Old things are passed away, and behold, all things are become new. He saved me. You know that today. Is there a change of direction in your life? I challenge you this morning. Does this world see you a real difference? Or they just see us as one of those religious folks? That's a church person. Yesterday, a young boy was at my house. His mom come to pick him up. Everything was fine as long as they were talking football and fun. And, but as soon as church was mentioned, you thought somebody lit a fire under her shoes. She had to leave. Got to go. Got to go right now. Hey, I'm, I'm saying today, is there a difference? Am I making an impact? If I live my life marked by commitment, would they know my labor of love? Would they know that, wait a minute, down there is a place I can call. I, I, know, I know it gets tiresome sometimes. We get so many calls of people wanting. And I know that you're going to be used. And I know that God's... But I'm, I'm saying the reality of it is, if you're going to do anything for God, you're going to be used. Get used to it. I choose to be used. Use me. But well, Brother Kelly, don't you understand? They're just taking advantage of you. Good. I want to be Christ-like. How many here could be honest and say you've taken advantage of Him? You've taken advantage of His mercy. You've taken advantage of His grace, His long-suffering, His kindness toward us. When we look at this passage of Scripture, when the world looks at us this morning, I want you to see that we need commitment. I believe a lot of it's like the commitment that I used a few weeks ago. It's commitment to that young man when he wrote his girlfriend and he said, sweetheart, if the world was as hot as the Sierra Desert, I would crawl on my knees through the burning sand to come to you. If the world would be like the Atlantic Ocean, I would swim through shark-infested waters to come to you. I would fight the fiercest dragon to be by your side. And then he wrote, I will see you on Thursday if it doesn't rain. While we laugh, that's our level of commitment to God. Yes, God, I'll serve, I'll do, I'll work, I'll minister. If you make it easy, if it doesn't cost me, I'll, I'll, I'll do it, God, but you, you, you just, you know, God, can you make it so I don't have to do anything? Can you just bring the fruit and dump it in my lap? And I'm thankful he does that. But I want you to know that as a church, I want a commitment. The old songwriter wrote, I'll go with you through the garden. I'll go with you through the judgment. I'll go with you, with you all the way. And as we close today, I'd ask you to sing, Where he leads me, I will follow. Where He leads me, I will follow. Where He leads me, I will follow. I'll go with Him, with Him, all the way. I believe true biblical commitment. I believe we can have an impact in this town. Understand, if our confidence is in Him and not in ourselves, and the fact of the resurrected Savior, we're walking in the power, plugged into the power of the resurrection, believing that He's coming again today, could be the day. This is the day. What if it was today? If we woke up every morning, if I thought with my wife this is the last time I'll ever see her, would I change my words? Would I change my actions? If I thought this is the last time I'd ever see my grandchildren, would I, would I want the words in my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in the sight of God? If I believed that Jesus could come at any moment, would it change my approach? Father, we love you today and thank you so much for your word and for your truth. And Lord, we live a life, oftentimes as a preacher's kid, and Lord, you know that we were told we lived in a fishbowl. And everybody's watching our lives and seeing our lives. And Lord, many of my friends and fellow preacher kids fell by the wayside because 
they would use the excuse of that fishbowl. Lord, the pressure. They wanted to be like normal kids, they would say. and They wanted to be like the rest of the world. God, that day you convicted my heart. It was a privilege. What a blessing it was in my life to have people watching. The accountability. Sure, Lord, there were times when I doubted and I feared. But God, help us to see the reality today that you want us to live a life that has an impact, that makes an impact. And I don't want to live my life just floating down the stream. Whatever comes my way. God, I just don't want it to be a, a life that is lifeless and hopeless and helpless. God, a life that makes a difference in others. Help us, Lord, to see the need of a church in this Laodicea and age. If we truly believed you were coming again, we would truly believe that Antichrist are already on the scene. We truly believe that the end is here. Lord, we would realize that our loved ones may not have an opportunity tomorrow and it would be such a passion. We wouldn't have to think about praying for them, but God, it would be the cry of our heart. God, we wouldn't have to think about witnessing to our neighbors or finding clever ways, but God, it would be the desire, the words of our mouth, the actions of our life would all be reflected by what we believed could happen today. Help us, Lord, to live a life that has an impact in our community and to be the church that you would have us to be. Lord, if there be one here today that doesn't know you as their personal Savior, Lord, before they leave this place, Lord, I pray they'll come and, Lord, we can take the Scripture and show them how they can know you, that you love them. There's nothing that they've ever done that, Lord, you have not already nailed to the cross. You've already paid their sin debt. And God, that you love them and you want to offer them eternal life through Jesus Christ the Lord. God, help them today to receive and believe. And God, I pray, Lord, that you'll guide and direct now. Help us to be obedient to your call. Lord, I know the church is a good church, good people. But God, help us, Lord, to get to become like the church of Thessalonica. Lord, may when missionaries come and preachers come, when they sit down, they begin to witness or pass out of track. They are told by the people that they are greeting about the church, about the testimony, about how Jesus loved, how they know the story already. Help us in Jesus' holy name. Let's all stand. We'll sing this song of commitment and we'll be dismissed. I can hear my Savior calling. I can hear my Savior calling. I can hear my Savior calling. Take thy cross and follow, follow me. Where he leads me, I will follow. Where he leads me, I will follow. Where he leads me, I will follow. And I'll go with him, with him all the way. I'll go with
you. You are dismissed. We love you. Pray you'll be back tonight. You are dismissed.